back to Schoolhouse Beer and Brewing's Grain to Glass, the complete series of how to brew a beer from conception all the way through fermentation. In this episode, we're going to be looking at yeast starters. Cheers. So yeast starters, why do we use them and when do we use them? That's a really important question. First, most liquid yeast, your uh, White Labs, Y Yeast, Omega, they all have between 100 and 150 billion cells. Well, that, that's enough for a five gallon batch under basically 1050 original gravity. That's a really small beer. You're talking about four and a half percent. Now, when we're making larger ones, you can actually either buy two or three packs of yeast or you can grow it up. And that's what we're gonna look at today so stay tuned, we're gonna go through all the equipment you need, how to do it, and we're actually gonna show you in Beersmith how to calculate what you need. All right, cheers. All right, so how do we know what we need to make our starter through Beersmith? So if we double click on the recipe, um, the recipe will come up, as you can see. It's a recipe that we've, we've been working on since uh, we designed it. If we go to starter, Starter is going to show us the, the yeast that we're using. It's going to show us how many cells we need, how many cells without a starter, and yeast pack. It'll also say the recommended starter size is 1.13 liters. So um, what you can do, if you want, you can actually change this to 1.5, and it'll tell you you need 5.64 ounces of DME. Now. You'll see later in the video that we're actually using a 1.75 liter starter, and it comes out to 6.57 ounces, or about 200 grams. We're gonna talk about that very soon. Equipment that we need is an Erlmeyer flask, DME, a scale, 2,000 milliliters of water, a heat source, and a magnetic stir plate. Step one to our yeast starter is to bring the water to a boil. Usually what I do is I take my Erlmeyer flask, throw it on a burner at the house and bring it to a boil. I take a, like I said, 2000 milliliters. We're gonna boil off probably 250 milliliters at that time. But once we add the DME, it actually goes back up. Now, here at the shop, all we have is an induction burner, so I have to use a stainless steel pot, and all I do is add 2,000 milliliters of water to the burn. Now that the water is boiling, what we're gonna do is add our DME. We get a lot of questions at the shop is how much DME to how much water? Now, what the true calculation is, is 10 milliliters to one gram of DME. So what we're gonna do now, since we're doing a 2,000 milliliter starter, we're gonna add 200 grams of DME. Now, DME, as you know, gets sticky. If you don't know, you haven't been brewing long. So I'm gonna add this slowly so it doesn't clump. And then we're gonna chill. So the length of the boil. Usually I boil this for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, for all grain brewers, you know that you're gonna need to boil your wort for about 60. The reason why that is, is during the mash, we're creating complex carbohydrates, long chains of sugar. When we boil them down, they actually break down smaller for the yeast to eat. With DME, that wort's already been made. It's already been boiled, it's already been dehydrated. So this is basically a simple sugar already. All we're doing is making sure it's a super saturation. The Omega Tropical IPA. Um, Omega is a great pr uh, product out of Chicago, Illinois. They are, uh, why I choose Omega, one of the main reasons is you get 150 billion cells versus 100 billion cells. That's 50% more yeast for the same price, basically. Uh, the other reason why is they've got some really good proprietary yeast. This is not one of them, but it, they really do, like Sazenstein's Monster. Take a look at them. But the Tropical IPA, it goes up to 10% alcohol, which is great. They thought it was a Brettomyces for many years, but we found out that it's actually a Saccharomyces, and it's a low flocculating yeast. 
That means we're going to we're not going to have a lot of the dropout of the the we're going to keep that haze, let's say. The other great part about it is we're going to get mango, papaya and pineapple flavors out of this um, and it is amazing. So now we've chilled our wort, what we're going to do is actually pitch the yeast. To do that, it's pretty simple. You've done this before, most likely. I shake it up, I open the yeast, and all I'm going to do is pour it directly into the starter wort. The reason why I shake it is I want to get all those little yeasties out of there, ready to go. Now, we're going to use a magnetic stir plate. Magnetic stir plate uses a magnetic bar and a magnet. It has a motor in it and all it does is stir it. The reason why we're doing this is to keep the yeast active and to aerate the wort so that the outer membrane of the yeast cells breaks down. Now yeast is an anaerobic uh, organism. That means it doesn't need oxygen to live, but it does need oxygen to break that membrane down to start to propagate or to reproduce. So now we just turn this baby on. And sometimes you want to turn it back off, take it off, and recenter it. You'll hear it. And in just a few seconds, we'll start getting a vortex. And there you go. Your yeast starter is going. In about 48 hours, you're going to have about twice as much yeast to pitch, and it'll be perfect for your brew day. As always, thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe. Press the little red button, we really appreciate it. And finally, we got a question for you. Do you want to see how a grain father's set up, or you really don't care? Put it down in the comments and let us know. We're going to be setting our next video for next week. Thanks.